Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions for a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options. Go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. Well, the end of the international break and the start of the domestic season gets underway again. Four games so far. You know the story. Michael Beale hasn't spoken until today since that defeat to Celtic. 1-0 week past Sunday. He's been speaking to the media today. Craig Moore is here. Peter Grant as well, you can call them, 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. We'll hear a lot from Michael Beale. He said he speaks to a board member every day and he knows the team has to start winning. He's been asked as well, can he win back the fans? We're going to hear from him shortly. But for Rangers fans, the bad news is Todd Cantwell is going to be out for about four weeks. We're going to hear from Brendan Rodgers. We'll also hear from Ange Postacoglu speaking about Celtic and his time well, the last couple of years and the fact that he's in there in the running along with Jabby and Pep Guardiola for the FIFA Manager of the Year. And your team back this weekend. We're looking forward to every single one of the games. Peter was on earlier in the week with Rob and thoroughly enjoyed it. Afraid you've got me tonight. <laughs> uh, any more stick and I'll get my mother to phone in, which will be very strange given she's not with us. Uh, Craig, for you, great to see you. You're a wonderful human being. Oh, oh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> uh, Craig, we're also going to have the Australian assistant coach joining us in, yes. the, in the last half hour of the programme. Yeah, yeah. Ufuk Tale will be in later, so interested to hear um, what he's been up to and the game uh, that's coming up internationally, a game against England in October the 13th at Wembley. Big win for Scotland this time last week. Not so much against England. We'll talk about it to Peter Grant during the programme, but we've, uh, I think we've looked at enough this week. It's good to get back, Peter, isn't it? Uh, Brendan Rogers was there at the game the other night. Alec McLeish as well, your yes. former colleague. He was there round the boxes beforehand, <laughs> along with uh, big Mark Hately. So it was the, the Scotland-England duel. Absolutely, and then listen, it's fantastic to see Alec at the games now. He deserves that the respect. People forget the amount of caps he had and wonderful player he was for Scotland. Never mind the management side of it, but especially that. And I think it's great for him to get in there amongst the, all the Scottish greats. As you talk about, I'm not so sure about Big Mark. <laughs> 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 I'm sure Alec kicked him a few times when he played against him, that's for sure. The two formidable players, weren't they? Mm. Right. Uh, well, we go to Michael Beale immediately because that is the t- the big talking point. Yep. Rangers this weekend. Uh, he's been talking with the media today. The first question: What about relationship with the board? What happened basically after that defeat to Celtic? Yeah, naturally, I speak to uh, James Bisgrove every day. I speak to John Bennett and other members of the board at least two or three times a week as normal. So nothing's changed in that respect. We we've uh, we've sat and discussed this first period up to the September international break and like we do at all the international breaks, it's a chance for reflection for us. Well, it's disappointing the way the last three or four days went, for sure. Obviously, they were two big games and both results didn't go the way that we wanted and that's the reality of it. There's been some good things, there's been some things we certainly need to improve on and that's been the honest reflection. He was asked a bit more about his relationship with the, with the Board of Rangers. No, because my relationship with John Bennett and, and James Bisgrove is it's extremely close. I live that relationship every day, so I know where we're at, I know uh, what the plan was coming into the season, I know where we're going as a football club. Um, I was involved in every single decision. Every decision wasn't my decision. I'm involved in everything. We're very aligned. So I have no, I have no concerns about that. I can't, I can't affect the background noise. I just got to get on with my job day in, day out. And I see the guys, uh, uh, in James's case, probably every day. I see John and speak to him two or three times a week. So I'm really comfortable, like, you know. Uh, reporters and journalists are going to ask managers questions and in their interviews I can't I can't help that and he was asked there about does he get assurances from the board and that was his answer Craig what do you feel about it you wouldn't have imagined that just four games in this would be the the questioning for the Rangers manager no but uh, again the the just before the international break the the two really uh, poor performances and results um you know, questions are always going to be asked. Uh, you know, Michael's had the opportunity to to go and sign a, a number of players, maybe nine in total, uh, and and the players haven't really um, 
you know, hit the ground running, so to speak, which is required. Uh, you know, you don't have time up here in Glasgow in particular. Uh, and relationships relationships don't save your, your, your job, you know, results do. And that's what I think Michael Beale, um, you know, he'll understand that he needs to get back to, to winning games of football. His players need to find some, um, some resilience, some confidence, um, and, and, and get back to winning games of football. Uh, that's a challenge. It will be a tough game as well this weekend away to St Johnston. Peter, you had a great playing career, a great managerial career as well. What would you be saying to Michael Beale under this pressure? Listen, it's always difficult for managers when they're under pressure um, because the same questions will get put up. Uh, I've had great relationships, thankfully, with the boards I've been involved with uh, as manager and I could not complain about not having any backing. The bottom line is you have to win games. Yeah, yeah. That's the bottom line. It never changes. As I say, a, a great relationship with Dunfermline, with Ross and Thomas Megaly, the German, and they were brilliant guys on the podium near enough every day. Um, fantastic people. I never won enough games. They were desperate for you to win. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody is. And I'm sure the Rangers fans are want Michael to win because they want the club to be successful. So when they buy all the players, I feel they were really confident into this season, a big change and a big group of players. My concern was there was a lot of players bought, but they were all in the one area. That, yeah, that was always what I thought because I always think then you get mumbled up with yourself then because you make changes for the sake of making them. You'll bring other players on because you think, oh, that's not working or he's not looking sharp enough. Are they all number nines? But now you're asking me to play a slightly different position. All these wee things. And I just think you've got to get in there and say, right, this is what we're going to play. I've told you, there's two areas of the pitch I wouldn't play Todd Cantwell. As <laughs> a right side, and there's only two areas, they saw he plays right side, there's only two areas of the pitch I would play him as in the way to the left of the front mm-hmm. and as a number 10. And I've seen him most of his career. And I think he's a, a great asset when you're going forward and that, but I don't want him back at left back. Yeah. You know, and I think against Celtic they played him wide right. Mm-hmm. He's, he's maybe can run quick enough, but he's never going to go by anybody on the outside because that's not his game. You know, and you want people in there to create things. And that's me just looking at it. Yeah. And I think when you've got so many options at times, you end up just throwing everybody in and changing it because you think, well, that's not working. And then there's a pressure coming. See, when you're winning, it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's easy. You know, and remember, this was a when we said at the start, and this is the only thing I would say against Michael, he said he'd got all the work done early. Yeah. He'd got all the signings in early. It doesn't look that way at this minute in time, and I know sometimes you lose players through injury. That's not been the case to probably this week. That's right. This is yeah. the first time that they've had injuries you know, from the Celtic game. So he's had all these players to select from, and that's probably disappointing. And I hate to be, be under pressure because I would love him to be a success for him as a manager. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because... Sure. He made a big choice to leave Queen's Park Rangers the way he did. And that people will always question that now and look at that. And people, some people will be hoping he fails, you know. Mm-hmm. And listen, unfortunately, when you're the manager of Celtic or Rangers, you have, no, any manager, you have to win games. Mm-hmm. Simon and, Jordan mentions it all the time about the fact that, you know, he wouldn't go to Wolves because of the loyalty to QPR and then he went to Rangers. He was asked today, does he think his job is in peril? No, listen, I think that I'm disappointed with the results just like everybody else. And I think that, you know, sometimes if we small, small margins can make a big difference in a game of football and the last one, I think that was the case. But ultimately, you need to win games of football. Last season, we won a lot. Um, we didn't come away with any silverware, so this year is about picking up silverware. It's very early into the season. There's been a lot of change around me in my time as manager here, probably from February, March, both uh, within the club and also in the playing staff as well. And we've not started the season how we all wanted, but there's a lot of football to be played. And ultimately, you just play the game that's in front of you. Greg, you mentioned the two horror results for Rangers, you know, going out of the Champions League. OK, that can happen. Yep. But they did it last year. They got through. And then the Celtic result, which, you know, is no shame. You're playing the champions. But it was a weakened Celtic team coming mm-hmm. to Ibrox. What was it like on that day? You were there mm-hmm. with the fans, I'm thinking, particularly. Why have they turned so quickly? Well, I think the the biggest disappointment for the Rangers fans on that particular day um, were that the Rangers sat off. Um, and allowed Celtic to, um, I guess, uh, you know, dictate the game at times, certainly the first half. Uh, and, you know, the, the back line was, was a newish back line, hadn't played a lot of football together. So, you know, Rangers want to see, as Celtic want to see, they want to yeah. see their teams at the throat of their opponent and, and press and, Press them. and yeah. force an error, and especially at home. And the Rangers fans, they, they, they felt that as if they didn't get that. 
I think the problem that Michael um, has had and, and, and some of the criticism that's come his way is um, not knowing potentially his best 11. Uh, now, I know that there's there's two injuries now in Cantwell and Dowell, yeah. but bar, bar those two players, everyone else is virtually fit. Um, he needs to, I think, put the best 11 out there. Um, so that'll be interesting because what is that best 11? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, and I think that's important for the players, and I'll tell you why it's important for the players. Because I've said a number of times in terms of the rotation early on in the season, players are prepped for 50 to 60 games. Yeah. Right, you want rhythm, you want confidence. You need to build partnerships. You need to build combinations. Also, the thing I don't like about rotation, you've got to earn the right to get that jersey, mm-hmm. and that's why what you do every single day in training, um, when you're just rotating, it's like, well, okay, well, have you really earned the right to, to to get that jersey? And I think Peter, that when you have that culture, uh, in terms of that jersey's mine now and it's mine to lose. Someone else has to try and work even harder to get that jersey off me. When you get that opportunity, then it's up to yours to try and cement your place. But if you don't have that competition and all of a sudden you're getting games through rotation, then I, I think that, that the standards um, naturally drop away. Well, that's, I've said it many times on here. I thought COVID, I can understand this, the amount of substitutes. I don't agree with it now. And I think that's what's created that culture. Because halfway through the, the game, you're making five substitutions. So there's, that's you half a team. And I'm thinking, well, if I had to make five substitutions, I've got the decisions wrong to start the game with. And I, I've, that's why I'd take that away, because then you're managing. Do I put this defender on now? Do I put this midfielder on? Do I put the striker on? Do I go to two up or do I keep sure. one up? But it is there, Peter. He can't change that yeah, just now. but that's what I'm saying. Paul, I'm just looking at it now and the talk was a lot of change, right? Yeah. Who would have thought in a million years mm-hmm. this would have been Celtic's back four at the finish at Ibrox? Ralston, yeah. Big Gustav, Styles, and Burnaby. Will they ever play again together? Exactly. So you can't hit on that one. There's been a lot of change. There's been a lot of change at Celtic as well. Then you get in the middle of the field. Young boy, home come on and was excellent for that period. When he came on in the game, yeah. he made a difference. You know, when he came on because he knew how to take the ball. Callum McGregor was magnificent throughout the game. Matt Arelli's playing as good as he's came since he came here. Because but his defensive duties. So all these things, there was a big change. As I said, but looking at that back force, you cannot keep saying there's been a lot of change. We know that. Celtic have changed their manager. Yeah. You know, which is probably the hardest thing. Because he's maybe looking for slightly different things from different players or he's got a different idea on a certain different player it is a bit different isn't it the of way course, he plays of course it has all these yeah. things but even the substitutions are slightly different you know and you've got to earn that and as I say I agree with what Oz is saying you were never either well we rest you for Tuesday you'd have hated that as a player yeah. you just wanted to Did play yeah. or you just wanted yeah. to play if the manager was telling you you were rested you're definitely playing on Tuesday yeah. you'd have been like that you mean I'm dropped right. that was the first thing you said back look to him look at his face no <laughs> yeah, he's saying exactly the same no, thing no, as you that's yeah, what you yeah, said, no, you no, said no, yeah. right? but that means I'm dropped yeah. you know and if you look at Celtic last year yeah. on the treble sure. you could have picked their team yeah. I cannot pick the Rangers team Celtic I can understand because of the injuries but I couldn't pick the Rangers team I know they're back four of Barisic yeah, sure. which is like another question but well people are asking about well, Barisic why could he play internationally and didn't play in that why huge was he allowed game? to go Paul never mind why was he allowed to play why was he allowed to go for me you should never have been allowed to go if you're injured with your club side before you should not be allowed to go with the national calls team. are coming in 08 08 17 17 700 uh, there's a lot on Michael Beale tonight because he's been speaking to the media um, and you can join us on the socials at Go Football Show Billy's on already and he's got a question I'll put it to you in a moment or two Craig uh, but here's more from Michael Beale he was asked uh, did you Look for assurances from the board? Listen, I don't need assurances. I'm part of a, a plan in terms of where we're going as a club. Uh, it's something that I'm fully aware and involved in. And ultimately, a football manager needs to win games of football. In the last two, we didn't win. So we need to get back to winning. And, and we've got, what is it, seven games in 22 days now. So there's a good opportunity for us to do that. Well, seven games, 22 days. It's going to be massive, isn't it? He said, but there's no extra pressure on him just now. He knew what he was signing up for. That's fine. I'm happy to take the accountability. You know, not every decision is mine within the football club. It's a collective decision between the board, myself and one or two others. And we have a plan. We had a plan this season to reduce the size of the squad and the age of it. We have. We haven't started the season well. If we had started the season uh, better or if we'd have won the last game, it still wouldn't have been uh, all rosy in, in, 
inside, if you like, there's, there's a work in progress. I think there's been a lot of change in the club since probably February, March time on the ball, structurally in the club and, and within the squad as well. A lot of players who was key to this club in previous years have moved on. New players have come in and it's, tight. it's important that we give them time to, to show their quality over the season. I've got no doubts they'll show that. Craig? Yeah, Merit, that, look, there has been a lot of change, not only obviously in the team this season, but, but also off the field. But as a manager, in terms of the, the, the backroom stuff and the restructure of the, 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 the club, so to speak, is not the, the manager's concern. His, his concern is obviously his roster of players, um, and and getting them out there and, and, and getting results. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, there is pressure. There's great pressure uh, at Rangers as there is at, at Celtic. And and Michael Beale is is he, he's well aware. He, he's in that situation now. There is high pressure every game now. Uh, any slip, it, it could be fatal. So that's the pressure. And the players, well, the players need to stand up, of course. Um, so it will be interesting to see this break. Is, is, I said when it, when it happened, it was not going to be a great thing because you wanted that game within two or three days, you know, to get that game because it's just allowed, you know, the papers to to be talking about things uh, for a longer period yeah. of time. And the fans as well. The fans also. It has been the talk of the town, hasn't it? It has been. There's no, no doubt. No doubt about that. So, like I said, the I think what Michael Beale needs to do is is clearly get he's starting eleven that he thinks that can go and win football matches and and allow. Them to build, very cliche is what uh, you know. As, as much as what it is, it is one game at a time. Peter, he has to just go and focus and win against St Johnston. And Bill wants to know what your team is going to be for tomorrow for both of you. We don't need it immediately, but what do you think is what's going to be Rangers' winning team because they can't slip up at all. So to jump in there, Peter. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just listening to Michael. And it's, it's important because yeah. as a manager, when you get into a football club, there's always people there that are not your cup of tea, as in the type of player that you're looking for. Because you've played against them. I was the same, simple thing like Dunfermline. Mm-hmm. I go in there, we all would be, we'd beaten them and played them off the pitch a right lot of times. So we'd done really well against them. So I know there's players when I take the job that I think I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be able to change that. But because of the contract, I need to balance this and try and manoeuvre that as we go along. I only got to the October. And listen, I deserved only to get to the October. As I said, Paul, before, I lost four games and drew seven. Couldn't mm-hmm. win one. But the cup was great, as I keep saying. Yeah. So that I was unfor- but yeah. that was an unfortunate thing. But change, you always want to make change. But with clubs like Celtic and Rangers, while you're changing, Craig says one word, winning, while you're yeah. changing. Mm-hmm. You don't get an excuse and saying, well, these boys were here. Because they're all Rangers football players. They're all Celtic football players. They all should be capable of winning games and having that mentality in one game. So managers, we all have to do that. One, during the changes I said, and the only thing that surprises me is that we talk to the board and I speak to them and whatever. Ultimately on match day, if you're the manager, it's your choice. You're the gaffer. You're the man. Match day, team selection. Because if it's not, don't take the job. That's fact. Because the bottom line is, you're going to get sacked because of the results. Yeah. Not because what somebody tells you in the stand to do. Know what the guy and the chairman says to you to do. The chairman gives you that job as manager or head coach, whatever it is, for one reason, to pick a team that wins games on the football pitch. And listen, that we all know that. And I know that Michael will be up during the night and t- he thinks he's not worrying about it. I don't need reassurances. We're up, we lie awake at night, Paul. It doesn't matter sure. what team you're at. You're I was human. at Aloha. Yeah. I lay awake at sure. night if we lost games. But Fairman, you yeah. name it, Norrie, Norwich, Junior, West Ham, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. I lay awake at night. Yeah. And it doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. And see, when you win... You enjoy it for 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. You've talked to the press and you're quite, whew, it's a relief. Yep. Then all of a sudden you're preparing again yeah, for next the next game. one. Yeah. And that is the ultimate well, way Celtic. That's Rangers. why I'm not a coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it is. Nope. It's relentless and uh-huh. never ends. Yeah. Right. You win a game, you, you lose a game. Boom, you're on to the, the next one. It's, not, it's non-stop. And I've got so many friends in the game that are in those positions and I'm like, it's not for me. Billy also wanted to know where have the Rangers players been then? So 12 days since the game, yeah. were some of them off in holiday? Obviously there's the injury to Todd Cantwell, which yeah. we know about now, yeah. or were they back in training? I wouldn't be surprised if they had a couple of days off. Yeah, yeah, uh, look, yeah. I, I would like to think that um, everybody was given a, a few days off um, to, to recharge, refresh, and know that you're coming back in. And by the way, you have to work your backside off now yep. as a group, as a club. Um, a lot of hard work and, and that's the only way to get through a tough situation and like I said against St Johnston Paul it doesn't need to be pretty it doesn't need to be beautiful but it needs to be three points and and, and that's how simple it is I think at times we complicate football um, but Rangers and Celtic 
It's all about winning. If you can do it in style, what a bonus. What a bonus. But that's a bonus. That is a bonus. Right, but right now, Michael Bill needs to, to get his team up, ready, and winning games of football. The words there of Craig Moore to Michael Beale and to the Rangers fans. Lots of comments coming in here on the socials at Go Football Show and calls as well. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Still to come more from Michael Beale and also Brendan Rogers and Ange Postacoglu. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face to face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go. Well, I think the team need to, to win games of football. We've got some good opportunity in front of us right now and the team needs to show uh, a rhythm in the way that we're playing and the new players obviously need to show that they're settled. They've had a long time now. We've probably had, I think, over 40 sessions on the pitch and nine games and four or five pre-season games. The players arrived at different times, but there's no excuse about it being a new team. I think if you take the League Cup game aside, seven or eight players have played in every game, so... There's been a little bit of change in the front line, but there's been a lot of new players in those areas. We'd, it's not as if we came into this season with the same front line we had last year. So each player is different, but what I would say that the new guys now have had enough time to settle. They felt uh, the heat, if you like, in, in, in Glasgow in terms of the reaction from the fans. I think the fans made uh, their feelings clear to the team at the end of the last game, and it's important we see a response now from me first, but obviously the players as well. Peter, pressure at the top. You've always said three clubs in the UK among the biggest in the world when it comes to pressure, Man United, Celtic and Rangers. 100% Paul. And I only say that, as I said, because I've been 26, 27 years in England. Mm. Because I used to go to some of these and watch all these uh, games and obviously local derbies with mm. West Ham, Tottenham, all these pressures that come. But nothing like Glasgow. Nothing. Why is, why is that, do you think? Just uh, fans. <laughs> obviously, fans love their football here. They, yeah. they, they live for it, they breathe it, you know, they want their team to be successful. Yeah. It's the topic of conversation when you get into work, sure. do you leave work? It could be that in England as well. I'm just thinking in London. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm not, no, it's different, Paul. Listen, I, know I, know, this. Well, I, I was know. at Fulham, great yeah. club, fantastic yeah. club. The cottage. You know, yeah. exactly, fantastic yeah. club, loved it. For in, but you turned up every day and it was like a fashion show, <laughs> you know. You're talking about what superstar am I sitting next to uh, the day? Yeah. Because... It's like in here at Go Radio, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Goff Day, Grado, exactly. Barry Ferguson, <laughs> Leanne Crichton. You know, but you're off no, film stars and everything. Yeah? Yeah. So I understand that. Yeah, that's part of it. John You've Martin. got that, like, say, Celtic and all that. But the core of it yeah. is the supporter off the street mm. who work to go and support them. Yeah. I mean, I was over in Ireland at a Celtic function last week and it was 25 years. I was at one in Dundee on the Friday night. Yeah. 76 years. Wow. 75 yep. years, sorry. Yep. 75 I years. 76 was an right. odd number. Oh, 75, <laughs> sorry, I was yeah. thinking of myself there. Yeah. <laughs> but 75 yeah. years, and you're thinking, the Rangers will have the exact same. And they, that's what it means to them. So the pressure that comes with that and representing that, Michael knows that, he's not yeah. stupid. You know, he knows what sure. goes along with that. And it's not about winning one game. It's about winning constantly, and it's about winning silverware. And you have to win silverware. And that's why when people are talking about Europe, would you like to do well in Europe? Would you like to do this? And then some people say, oh, I'd rather go into the... Europa League and I'm thinking you better win the league yep. so you qualify for the Champions League it's the only way you're going to get better but you have to win the league and now the pressure comes going with Michael going forward he has to win the League Cup because Celtic are not involved that becomes massive now because that, that, that's what he's expected you're expected either to be the, in the Cup final with Rangers if you don't draw each other before it and then on the day you have to perform to try and win that because it is torturous and I was there when you lost Cup finals against them so I know what it's like and that comes along with that. So there's an added pressure with that as well, along with the results mm -hmm. now. But it's interesting to be saying there about the forward line. Again, I'd never heard what he'd spoke going about before at the press conference. But that, that is vital for him. And if he keeps changing that, the players start to doubt their self. That's the thing as a striker. Yeah. You need to be in there and getting chances, not getting taken off after 50 minutes. Because that's not a game. And people keep... Go that game counts for them. As I said earlier on, it can be 10 games, people are saying he's no score done. Course, but he's probably yeah. only played three if you take all his minutes in. And Craig said that. Yeah. Players are trained and fit to play 90 minutes at 50 games a year. Yeah, and, and, and train... I understand that when you're playing a lot of games, the, the, the training loads and all that sort of stuff will drop off. But when you train, it needs to replicate a game of football at the weekend. If it, if it doesn't, then... That's when you. That's when you have your slip ups. It's, it's, it's not an easy come match day to to turn it on like a switch. Craig, on and off. Craig, I said last year, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. I said last year, 
Celtic's hardest games were on the training pitch last year when everybody was fit. Yep. When everybody was fit, that was their hardest games. Because it should be, because they should be fighting for their lives to try and get a starting position in the team yep. and running out on a Saturday to represent your club. Because that's what you, do. you don't want to be sitting on the bench or sitting in the stand. You want to be playing. And that's why it was so competitive. And that's what you need to have. If I'm Michael Beale, I'm looking at who's hitting the back of the net most of the times in training. Who's going into that position to put the ball in? Well, he's my starter. Forget everyone else, what everybody else thinks. He's putting the ball in the net more often than anybody. I picked teams on that. And it was a, maybe a change for the week before. Maybe watch a guy during training, hardly hit the back of the net, and another striker's banging him in, banging him in, bang. He's playing this Give week. Give him a chance. Yeah. He's playing this okay. week. But we've both, Peter, we've both been, in, been involved in teams where we've had good runs and we've had bad runs, right? But when you're on that bad run, right, or even personally, myself went through uh, a period of time, 12, 15 months, where I, yeah. I, I couldn't do anything right. Um, in, 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 I'm glad you was only in, once in, in, the, in the Rangers fans eyes. Right, yeah. So yeah. all you could do One Keep quiet And did you? Had to mm. and, and would do the same today it's, it's, That's what you should do Keep quiet Work hard Turn the performances into wins Turn your performances into better performances Get the best out of your uh, direct opponent. Win your, your your small battles within a game of football. And, and at the moment, I just feel as if, like I said, that's that's something that's required. You know that then drives standards, and 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 drives winning games of football. But just go about your business quietly. I mean, if we, we live in a different world today in terms of social media and all those kind of things, and, and pe- sure. people are quite lively on it. Um, you know, but again, when when things aren't going. I still think that there should be a very clear message to say, listen, heads down, keep quiet, work hard, go and get results. Big two are back on tomorrow, 12.30 St. Johnson against Rangers, the Sky game. And then at three, Celtic against Dundee. The other games, they're all on tomorrow, which is good. Hearts against Aberdeen, Kilmarnock Hibs, Motherwell St. Mirren and Ross County Livy. And of course, we've got the championship tonight. Air United against Partick Thistle. Then tomorrow, at Abroath against Airdrie, Dundee United against Morton, Queen's Park at Dunfermline, and Wraith Rovers against Inverness Cali Thistle. Peter, um, Jim is on asking, Brendan Rogers has told Leila Bado to learn from the mistake which ended up in the injury at training with uh, Israel just last week, so he didn't actually kick a ball for them. Um, he's out now for four to five months. This is what Brendan Rogers was saying about what's happening with him. Yeah, he's gone to London today for a uh, for a scan, but we think it's it's going to be around about three to four months. He picked up uh, at the end of training in a shooting exercise. So, uh, so yeah, it's a real shame for us because he's um, he's done well over pre-season, and, and as you can see, he's, he started in a lot of the games since I've been here. So, uh, so yeah, so we're really disappointed, but uh, it's. Uh, it's a squad game for us, so we will have other players to come in. And he was saying he'll learn from it. I take it it's because after a flight, and it's a long flight, isn't it, um, before yeah. the game to Israel, that he did some extra training. And apparently I didn't realise the fluid that would be in the legs. It takes hours uh, to, to disappear. Yeah, but it's difficult, Paul, because he's a finisher. That's what I say about being yeah. a wide player. He's a finisher. And you can see he practices. You know, he gets in at the back post, scores his goals. And I can understand, depending on the session I've done as well, mm-hmm. it could have been quite a tiresome session, whatever. And I've been there myself. I lost the top striker, Robert Earnshaw, when I was at Norwich. The last kicky training, Robert says, Gaffer can have one more. And he's went to whip it. And that was him out for six months. You're kidding. You know, wow. The last kick. And he's just, what, he'd been doing training. It was the last shot. And he's went, he's trying to be clever, give the goalkeeper the eyes. And he's whipped it out the opposite side. And he went down like a ton of bricks. And I thought at first he was joking. Mm-hmm. You know, but the actual groin, the bone, uh, the muscle come off the bone off. and he was out for six months. So oh, in the baddest case, is it unlucky though? Or yeah, is it, yeah, are you yeah. told in advance, look, don't overdo it if you've just been flying for six, seven hours? Well, Paul, the difficulty is Craig will tell you more about the travelling because yeah. he knows he's sure. at bigger distances for sure. A career on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So mine, mine was slightly different. If we were off buses or whatever, and especially down south, when you used to be travelling six and seven hours on a Friday, you know, the last bit of training, forget it. There's nothing like that, you know. And it depends how long you've been standing about. If you're warm against training, it's difficult, you know. But I can understand strikers and forwards always want to hit the back of the net. Yeah. No, it, it's, you know, individuals prepare and, and, and need certain things. Uh, and it's different, as I Absolutely. say to, to everybody. You know, the striker maybe wants to get, you know, that one goal under his belt before he goes inside. A uh, defender maybe wants to get it. Whatever. Everybody's different. When you're travelling, at, at, you know, the... 
the first session, the first couple of days, obviously they need to be light and you need to build yourself, uh, you know, up to that. Um, so for a barter, is, is it maybe a little bit of immaturity or inexperience? Yeah, possibly, but at the same time, that might be, I don't know, on a, on a day-to-day yeah. basis for him, that might be part of his routine. Well, how many times did they say, boys, if somebody stayed out, you say, look, he stays out and practices his, yeah, of course. his job. Yeah. He One practiced. example. He, yeah. he, he does sure. brilliant. Look, he's practising his job. Yeah. You know, when do I see you out there? You're never out there. And we've heard it so many times for managers, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, you not know? for sure. And okay. you know what I'm yeah. saying? It might be. Abada has his own preparation, mm. right? And, 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 and for me, uh, and if I'm Brendan Rodgers, mate, you've got to back that. Sometimes you can be unlucky. Yeah, absolutely. He's a hard worker. I know the Israeli manager has really praised him and said that he's great to have around the camp. And he came in such uh, brilliant form, yeah. especially after winning the derby. Uh, let's get the, do you want the injury update from Rangers and Celtic? Celtic first, here's uh, Brendan Rodgers. No, not from international. I just think some of the, the, the guys that obviously have been out for a little longer term, obviously Rio Atate will be back, which is great news for us. He's, he's trained and just with some of these guys now, it's just about when to put them in because some of them haven't played for, for a period of time. It's just finding the, the right game and the right moments and the right amount of game time so that they're not overloaded. So, uh, But great to have him back. Like we say, Marco Tilly has been back now training, but has missed all of pre-season, so we're just waiting for the right moments again for him. So um, Cameron Carter-Vickers is doing very well, hopefully on, on schedule to be back beginning of October. Mike Naroki is, is obviously a little bit longer. Kobayashi back now training and, as well. So, uh, so yes, yeah, just starting to get players back now which is good 60,000 at Celtic tomorrow the fans will be looking for a, a performance and they'll be buoyed by the result in Govan the other week who are they going to see at the back is Nat Phillips going to be in tomorrow do you think I think if he's fit enough I think he will play him because when do you play him then Paul you know when you've got European games and all that coming up thick and fast you've got to get game legs on um, and the boy's done really well the best time at times is to get into a team that's feeling good about itself you know and I thought skills was excellent I thought young Gustav struggled a little bit at times. You know, he could see what he was trying to do. I don't mean struggled defensively. I thought he handled that at times not yeah. bad, but made the errors. So, and probably he's a net quicker than he expected. But I think if you're going to play Nat Phillips going into the European games, he has to have games in his legs. And if there's an opportunity that he's had a full week or a couple of weeks of training, you definitely throw him in tomorrow because you want him to be available for the big games coming up. Peter, will you give us your Celtic team shortly as well? Craig, you've got a point there? No, no, I just, yeah, yeah, he's right. I mean, Phillips will definitely get minutes because, yeah. he, look, he's been brought in as an experienced player. Um, so, therefore, he's going to play. Do you like uh, him as a player? Uh, again, I don't know too much about him, but in terms of, um, you know, going into Liverpool, mm-hmm. going into a tough time and actually playing and, and, and handling that kind of pressure. He did well, didn't he? Yeah, so then that type of player will, will do just fine. Um, like I said, like he'll get his minutes and he'll be a, a positive impact for Celtic in a time of, of kind of need, in, in, you know, due to their unfortunate injuries. Rio Hatate has reiterated his desire to reach the top level of football as contract talks continue. What is with the Celtic. top? Well, exactly. I hesitate to ask that to a Celtic yeah, legend, <laughs> Peter Grant, who's brought up, you know, as you would be as well, you know, kids here only ever wants to play for, you know, the teams here yeah. and the big two are the biggest teams in their world. I know it's changed days, but I'm just not sure. What's the what's the chat on Hatati? Is he going to be back in tomorrow? Is he going to is it going to work for him under Brendan Rogers? I don't think he'll start. I think he's a wonderful player. Um the biggest thing with him is if he wants to reach the top, the pleasing thing is that means he's got to be playing exceptionally well for Celtic. That's the pleasing thing because he's a top uh, quality player. And listen, you always want players to achieve. And how they're going to achieve and go to the Premier League, and then let's not be kidding ourselves. Maybe Saudi Arabia now, that's, <laughs> that, that, you know what I'm saying? That's the problem you've got now. But if you're going to Saudi and you're thinking, okay, that's financially. Yeah. You're going to the Premier League, you're playing mm-hmm. against top European opposition all the time, if you understand what's yeah. in all the players yeah. that's playing in that. It's like a Champions yeah. League every week. Yeah. And that, that's the, the thing, and I can understand that. But he'll not get what he gets at Celtic, Paul. And I'm saying that, and I, and I know, yeah, you understand that. If Celtic and Rangers, to be fair, go into the Premier League in England, and I keep saying it, then within four or five years, then people would see, give them the same money, put them at the same table with all that finance, then we'll see what players would go to Celtic or would want to leave Celtic or, or the Rangers. What would they, would they want to do then? Because they'd be getting all these things at their door. And they're top quality players. So the pleasing thing is, like Ange, as a manager, he's done an exceptional job. Brendan, prior to it, done an exceptional job. People come and chap your door. And that's why we're hoping every year that Celtic have got people chapping their door asking for their players because it means they're still winning cups and trophies and leagues and whatever and that the players are playing at their best. 
And it's slightly different uh, for the foreign players, Paul. I mean, Peter brought brought up here and, and, and plays for the club that he loved and supported, mm. you know, and, and, and that, that would go on your whole life if, if you could have it that way, you know. But the foreign players... You know, not being brought up here is slightly different. They know they're playing at top clubs because they experience it. Um, but, you know, they, maybe their amb- ambition is still to potentially try different kind of leagues. And without being disrespectful to, to the Scottish League, there are better leagues. So so they, they have a kind of different mindset to, to the local lads that, that I kind of grew up with at Rangers uh, in, in the dressing room and, and Peter himself in terms of, you know, be, being at Celtic and people that he would have grown up with. They, it's it's a different uh, mentality or a different situation for the locals to the foreign players. That's an interesting one, Paul. How did you think about Rangers compared to Palace, if you understand That's the same? exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Exactly. Or Newcastle as well. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. He, and he, even Newcastle was a right. massive yeah. club. Yeah, yeah. Massive We're going to have to go support. to the break, so then we'll ask him afterwards. And also, what did you love more, Rangers or the Cricklewood? When you were here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the Crick was not bad. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, we couldn't get in the sun because they were all there. <laughs> The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face to face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Uh, someone is going to be winning £250 between now and 7 pm. It's not going to be you, Craig Moore, nor you, Peter Grant, because you're part of the family here at the Go Radio Football Show. Everyone's been talking about the big game the other week and, of course, the reaction afterwards and uh, people saying to you today they enjoy the show you've got another yeah. another new listener yeah yeah no yeah. i was out having breakfast this morning oh. in the, in the west end excellent um, what did you have and, uh, yeah. oh. uh, what did i have? eggs, eggs royale or oh. something like that oh, yeah. it would be yeah. eggs yeah. royale i'm sorry <laughs> could have been very a nice. square very, very very nice yeah but celtic uh, celtic fan come up he says craig he says uh, love the show I says, oh, that's good. I'm on with Peter Grant tonight, so I'm sure you'll love listening yeah. to us too. <laughs> Sorry, he says, I really, I really like Paul Cooney. Yeah, says, I, I, how, I, how good yeah, is Paul steady, Cooney? Steady. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, Big John was in great form last night with Leanne Crichton, and yep. both of them talking a, a lot of good sense yesterday on the programme. I think it's been quite a couple of weeks, hasn't it? The international, it's huge, Peter, that we're through. Uh, we're not through. I almost said we're through. We're virtually through to Germany next year. What do you feel overall? Just a quick word on it, because we've been no, back to... They've, they've, yeah. they've earned it. You know, Paul, let's yeah. not kid ourselves. You know, you're beating Spain at home, yeah. you know, Norway away. God on me, if there's somebody that said that prior, you didn't rip their hands off for it, you know what I mean? So, great credit to him. The other night there was a bit of a, a letdown in the respect of that. Yeah. But not a letdown, Paul, because, listen, how many of the Scotland team would get an England team? I mean, you look at it that way. And, that, that's, and I look at the bench, England. And I just look at the bench and think, and we said that about Celtic last year when we go back about that, saying you look at the bench, what they can change and what they can bring on, the guys that's not selected. And that tells you the difference. And they should be, Paul. Some, what is it, six to eight million people? Yeah. You know, they've got down there. I know yep. all these things. The money gets poured in to the le- all the levels down there for the youths, all the youths. So by the time they get to the national team, they've had unbelievable experience of travelling yeah. all over the world to play in these top competitions. Sure. And that's the only way you get better. And they constantly do it, and they've got loads, loads more players, you know, in the respect to that yep. of quality. You asked this former player a question just before the break. Mm-hmm. So you were at Crystal Palace, you were at Newcastle United, yep. you were back at Rangers. So mm-hmm. I know it's changed because England has gone on to another stratosphere, but yeah. how did it compare? Because you loved it at Rangers, and they loved yeah, you. Yeah, no, I, I loved it. I mean, the reason why I left was probably because I wasn't established established as a start in 11, I felt as if it was an end of an era. Uh, and then working briefly with Teddy Venables, took me down to Crystal Palace now because he was into club football. Um, look, I, I obviously really enjoyed my time uh, in the early stages at Crystal Palace. Um, but in terms of uh, expectation and what I was used to at Rangers, um, where it's, it's winning is the only currency up here, you know, and Peter, you touched on the bus journeys down there. They were a nightmare. Sometimes yeah, six, seven yeah, hours absolutely. on the bus, and, and, and maybe losing games. But but then after the game, boys are jumping onto the bus and they're getting their food and the music's on in the background and they're laughing. I'm thinking oh, that doesn't that kind of doesn't work for me. That's not what I'm used to. So I found that part very very difficult. Um, but it, it was a great experience all the same. Uh, my time at Newcastle, slight, Newcastle's a big club. Yeah. Newcastle's a big club, and and it's a it's a hard working. City and and I like that. I like people that are that are real, that are genuine, um, that that work hard and um, a bit fa- like Glasgow. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, Paul. Fantastic uh, support. Um, they were just disappointed because they they 
the, the team probably, uh, we done okay when I was there. I think we finished seventh, eighth in the, in the thing, but they just want a team that represents their city well. Um, and it wasn't necessarily winning the Premier League at that time, but it was, it was performing and, 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 and doing well. Glasgow, completely yeah. different beast. And that's what I was asking earlier. I kind of, I, I don't know the answer. I've never played for either, but I've you know, lived my life in this city, yeah. reported on it for a few years. Mm-hmm. And there is something special about it. There's sides of it that's not so good, but there's another, a I magic think. about it. So what for you was it that was made Rangers your club and this rivalry between the two that you didn't see anywhere else? Well, I'll tell you what, winning trophies um, is, is always a nice way to get you on board. Uh, now, I come into to Rangers at a time where I just think that it was a family type of club. There was a huge uh, core of Scottish players. Um, I, so I got a great education, good and bad side of Scotland, Glasgow, yeah, sure. uh, west of Scotland. Yeah. Um, and just fell in love with the place, Paul. Um, you know, I spent uh, a lot of time with great Great friends, probably three separate teams, three different managers, um, and it just it, it look it meant so much to me, and I understood also that it meant so much to um, to people on the street, you know, like the the, the bragging rights, the you know, you touch on uh, this this city in particular thrives and, and is all about football, you know, you can walk there, you hear conversations everywhere, Paul, and it's all about yeah. it's all about the beautiful game, it's all about Rangers and Celtic. And some other teams in Scotland as well, let's not forget. But Rangers and Celtic is a massive one. Who were your three managers then? Obviously, Walter Smith. Walter, fantastic manager. Yep. Dick Avocat and Alec McLeish. Alex McLeish, who was there the other night, as I mentioned. We're going to fire on just now. We promised we'd hear from Michael Beale about uh, the injuries so far. What about Cantwell and Dowell? I think Cantwell first. The problem with his knee in the, in the challenge that he has towards the end of the game, um, he played on. Uh, after that, we had to send him for a scan. We thought it would be worse than what it is. The, the initial diagnosis was four weeks, so we're probably uh, two or one and a half weeks into that now. Kieran Dow has had a, uh, just a, a strange reaction with his knee. He, they've both, him and uh, Todd, have had their, their legs in a brace the last week or so. Um, Kieran's now out jogging, but we've got to see how that one goes and settles down. So I would say he's probably three or four weeks away as well. So does that help you choose your team for tomorrow, St. Johnson against Rangers? Well, uh, it it doesn't. I have a team, yeah. Paul. I, okay. have, I have a team, but it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't really, really uh, <laughs> help. Okay, it helps yeah. because there's two players less. Do you, but, do you want to hear my yeah. team? And Cantwell, he's going to be missed. Would you say? Yeah, you know, he, he is. Uh, but I, again, I think that probably due to where he played, certainly in the old firm match, mm. um, he wasn't influential in the match and didn't have the contribution that um, you know I'm sure Michael Beale and the fans would would have liked. Sure. Um, but, but my team that I've, I've got, yeah. mm-hmm. um, obviously Butlin and Goal, who, who I think has done a, a really good job. Mm-hmm. You talk about hitting the ground running, he has hit the ground running for me. I think, Peter, you'd agree? 100%. We yeah. said that before we came, Paul. Yeah. He was a top quality goalkeeper. So my, I've got a back four of Tavernier, yeah. Goldson, Suta. Um, I've got to go with Barisic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I kind of agree in terms of we, we would have never got away in the terms of coming off in a game before international break. would have never got away with the, the national team. But Barisic, I would have in there as left fullback. I'm going to go for a midfield three mm-hmm. of Lundstrom, Raskin, mm-hmm. Jack. Lundstrom, Raskin, and Jack. Uh, and, okay. and, and, and Rask, yeah. Raskin, probably yeah. the one that's going to have more of the legs. Maybe Jack and, and Lundstrom to, to, to con- control things. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go a front three, mm-hmm. right? But I'm going to go for Lammers in a number 10 position. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to go for... Two up top in Danilo and Dessas. The double D. Yeah. yeah, go. You sign these players. They need to show that they're good enough. They need to have the opportunity. Um, that would be the team, look, whether that's right or wrong. That's the team I would go with. Okay, what do you think? 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Peter, what about Celtic? Greg has been on. He's given us his team for Celtic's game with Dundee tomorrow. Do you want to hear it? Or will we hear yours hear first? first? in case you think I'm cheating. No, exactly. I was, <laughs> we'll go for yours. Yeah. Well, I would go with yeah. Hart. Yep. Johnson. Phillips, mm-hmm. if he's fit. Mm-hmm. Scales, Taylor. That'd be my right. back five. Scales and Taylor. So, Lager Bielka, not there from the, the Rangers game. Okay, yep. McGregor, mm-hmm. O'Reilly, mm-hmm. and Thiago home. At home, Oof. yeah. Greg's got the same in here. Yeah. He has, yeah. I would go for Yang, mm-hmm. Kyoga, and Mieda. 
Yang Kyogo and Mieda. Well, I'll give you Greg's, yep. one of the listeners. He's Hart, AJ he's put down, Johnson, Scales, Phillips and Taylor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same as you. Yep. He's got O'Reilly, McGregor and Tiago. Same as me. Yeah. And up front, he's got Maeda, Palma and uh, Kyogo. Right. So is that the only difference Yang, then? Oh. Yeah. Yang and Palma. You've got Yang and Palma. Yeah. I, I've, yeah. got, I've got Yang because okay. he's played games. I don't know what Palma is in his fitness mm. level. It's you Mallorca. Know what I mean? <laughs> 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 yeah, no. And you for something, yeah. for God's sake. <laughs> there's but, always um, an unlucky one. Yeah. There's always an unlucky one. I'm going, so I'm not sure who your unlucky yeah. one would be for that starting eleven at Celtic, but for the Rangers, one Matondo for me would be an, a, a one that would be well, unlucky. It's, inter- it's interesting. I put that Rangers team down. Okay, no, give me it then. Give us it. This is my Rangers team because I'm just thinking, you know, I'm saying, where would I be at this moment? Careful, time? Peter. Hearing, <laughs> hearing what I've said, I hear about players. Yes. I don't know where Sofuentes mm-hmm. is, isn't it? But I'm the same. I've got Barisic in, Suter, Goldstone and Tavani and mm-hmm. Butland, obviously back five. Because mm-hmm. you've got to keep that solid when you yeah. through a tough mm-hmm. time. I went for Jack, sort of been that slightly yeah. deeper, mm-hmm. and I've got Raskin and Sofuentes, yeah. Lammers, Matondo, and I've went for Roof or Danilo mm-hmm. that's only one I can't okay. swing around because I would go with one number right. nine because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I think at this moment in time you're trying to play two number nines split and the, everyone I've seen so far in my eyes all wants to be that main striker and play that position that's my role as a striker I'm not dropping in to mm-hmm. pick up their midfield player I'm in there to score goals yeah. and that's why I would go with that one Craig, what would you say? The reason why I go with two up the top because I think Dessers can be a handful. He can get flicks. He can get things. And I think someone closer uh, in around about him, which uh, for me uh, with a two, Danilo I think has been good in central areas. So I, I like a two up top. I like to do the opposite so, of what a lot of people are doing. So I like that because it keeps the, the back the centre half occupied. I like that. But I think it needs to change something to help that. And even if that went like a 4-1, and then three across and then two strikers... I just think the diamond's not working for me. Two strikers splitting a number 10 because it's letting the opposition in the wide areas yep. too much of the ball and that gives them a breather. And as you said about Celtic or Rangers, you're not allowed to give the opposition a breather. You're supposed to be all over them. But I, I, I always think when I watch Rangers, that's the out ball against them. When I've watched them through mm-hmm. pre-season and games, I thought that was the area that they feel they look vulnerable at this moment in time while they're settling it. I don't mind, sorry, Paul, just quickly. Oh. I, I don't mind when, see, people can... Say, for example, you let them out one side and then you've got a bit of a trap and you go and it's a press and all that sort of stuff and, and they can't come out the other side. But you're right, sometimes in games so far this season, Rangers have been set up where actually both sides have been too easy yeah, to get out. Absolutely, um, yeah. and, and it's caused them problems. And then Michael Bill has made, made changes. The news is next. Peter and Craig will be here afterwards. Lots of calls coming in. And there's more from Michael Beal, from Brendan Rogers, maybe from you, but also Ange Postacoglu. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers. With a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage and air source heat pumps, we offer bespoke solutions. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023. Where are you going? this weekend football wise all 12 premiership teams are playing on a Saturday when did that last happen Peter Brilliant. Grant Brilliant. Brilliant. Ago, I loved it. that yeah. was the Saturdays was the day that's football day Yeah. tomorrow you'll be there are you on I'm Celtic TV Celtic. Yeah. yes I'm going to watch Celtic tomorrow looking forward to it I'm on Co-Coms tomorrow so really looking forward to it Co-Coms he's got all the phrases now hasn't he yeah. and uh, yeah so uh, in English yeah <laughs> he's, got, he's absolutely <laughs> going to do me far too cheeky <laughs> uh, Peter Grant will be with us for the next hour or so Craig tomorrow you've got a double header I believe uh, so yeah. early are you going up the I'm going to go watch St Johnston Rangers uh, and then I'm going to shoot across and watch Hart v Aberdeen so taking two games wow um, Hearts and Aberdeen they both need to get points Rangers clearly need to get points as well um, after the defeat 12 days ago and of course for St Johnston they want to start to try and move up the table um, shall we Think about Alea and give away some money, shall we? £250, stand by. Well, I hope so. Win on the Go Radio Football Show with Alea Casino. New opening hours from 10am to 6am, seven days a week. Yeah. You could be on your way to the Alea Casino, the new sports bar, which is magnificent. And on the line now, John from Campus Lang. Hi, John. 
Hi, how you doing, guys? Hi, John. Hi, good, John. Good. Yeah, these two are in great form. Uh, so looking forward to getting back to the domestic, but it was a good win for Scotland against Cyprus, wasn't it? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. I just can't believe they've, they've won five games in a row. And, um, just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. We just lost you a little bit there. Hopefully it's... Uh, where are you in Canberra's Lying? Are you up Buchanan Drive or whatever? Hey, I'm up yeah. in uh, Newton Farm. Oh, um, yeah. I'm in, I'm in the car now with, with, with my wife because uh, I, I bust my tyre this morning. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Is your wife out fixing it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm only joking. <laughs> Listen, there's great football pitches there because uh, my grandson Noah plays there quite a lot, Newton Farm. Yeah. Magnificent. Ah, Newton yeah. Primary. There you are, exactly. Yeah, I Magnificent. Last Where are you? How did you play? <laughs> Uh, no great. No, I was going to say you get you get a staff for Rangers tomorrow. <laughs> aye, aye. The way it's going, aye. <laughs> John, well, we ask you the five questions, fifty pounds each, and then we'll get more banter from these two. With yeah, you we can afterwards. give it two hundred and fifty pounds. His wife are going up to help him. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, let, her, yeah. let her go Absolutely. shopping tomorrow. Romantic, <laughs> right, John? You ready? Uh, I'll give it my best. Aye. Here we go. Question number one: Who scored England's first goal against Scotland on Tuesday? Phil Foden. Good one. Yes. Well done. Yep. Second, which team currently sits second top of the table, the Premiership table in Scotland? Who's second top? Clarendon. Uh, yeah. you're, you're not far from it. I'm going to fade you down, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have to hurry you. Uh, Celtic. Uh, no, they're top. It's uh, Motherwell. Of course. Ah. Look, Peter Grant, he's... Oh, what planet have you been on? We've got John. John, you're a Canberra's Line Rangers fan. <laughs> <laughs> Local knowledge. Right, question three. Name any of the two players currently sitting at the top of the Premiership scoring charts. Uh, two of them. Oh, God. Two of them. Have a guess. One played what? in Australia. Hmm. Is that a clue? Or is that, I think oh, that's, 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 oh, that's I a hard clue. Can I give him one? One yeah. plays in hoops. <laughs> right, John. Uh, Abada. Oh, Abada. Kyogo oh, or La Fonda. La Fonda. Mm. Oh, Next one. Oh, Here's oh, one for you. Rangers take on Real Betis, as you know, this Thursday night. Yep. Which club yep. did their manager, Manuel Pellegrini, win the Premier League with in 2014? So you remember he won in England 2014. You've got this, John. Come on. They're still winning trophies left, right and centre now. A blue moon there for you. Man City. There yeah. you go. Yes. And the last question, you if you get this one wrong, we're going to put you in a rocket to Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the script says, no, you could be off to a layout with 200 and... What we at? 200 it would be if he gets this one right. Which team did Liverpool sign Ben Doak from? Young Ben Doak. Celtic. Yes. Celtic, correct. Good man. So, yeah, the only one you didn't get was the... Motherwell question, Motherwell. which Stephen Resider, uh, celebrity you, fan, will be raging about. So, uh, listen, to be fair, you were, you were yeah. given as a clue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, brain freeze. Yeah. I, listen, this is what happens to me every night. It's pressure. Still, I know. Especially these, honestly, they were in here giving me such stick tonight. Anyway, John, what are you thinking? I hear you're a Rangers fan. Uh, what's it been like the last 12 days? He doesn't want to even think about it since the Celtic game. <laughs> doesn't want to speak. Enough. He's yeah. hung up. Oh, I think he has just gone. Uh -huh. Newton Farmer just kind of took, took, took his cash there. and run. Yeah, <laughs> 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 he has. Yeah, that's showbiz. Uh -huh. John sounds a very nice man there with his wife, and he'll be taking her surely to the sports bar. Did, he get, did much to get there? Was it two hundred pounds? Oh, brilliant! I think that's right. Fantastic! Yep. Fantastic! You, you two help. Are you related to him? Either of you? The way you were helping? Uh, no, cracking guy out there, and he deserved a bit of luck after the tire this tired. morning. That pays for his tire. It certainly <laughs> does. That might be him just saying cheerio to you. Well, I just check here. Oh, see if I can work this, John. <laughs> Hello, John. Oh, he's gone. Okay. So well done to him and Brilliant. thanks to our friends at Alea. Brilliant. Down by the Clyde, the new sports bar. Enjoy it. Thanks, John, and Canvas Lang. Um, do you want to hear from Ange Postacoglu? Yes. Nominated of along yes. with uh, Xavi and, of course, Pep Guardiola for Coach of the Year, International yeah, Manager of the Year because of his success winning the treble with Celtic. He's been speaking about that nomination today. Yeah, and for the FIFA nomination, I mean, obviously fairly humbled but again I'm just wrapped that you know it's recognition again of a great group of people that I worked with staff and players you know everyone involved at Celtic uh, the fans and 
you know, it's great recognition for that club. It's a great club, and sometimes its achievements get diminished uh, because people sort of uh, look down on the league. But I think any time you win a treble, and, you know, we, we did that last year in, in the best possible manner. We won the league. We beat Rangers in both the Cups. It wasn't easy in any stretch. Um, and I just think it's great recognition for that football club. Again, I'm just the front man, but uh, I'm really, really pleased and, and, and wrapped that that great football club gets the recognition it deserves. So Ange Postacoglu, Peter, um, what a nomination for him and uh, he spoke really well there. You can hear his affection for Celtic. Listen, he was fantastic for Celtic, he was fantastic for Scottish football. Delighted he's doing ever so well at Tottenham, bear in mind he got manager of the month this, this month as well, so mm -hmm. congratulations to him. I think people are excited about him at Tottenham. But yet again, it tells me, and I've said it many, many times, people that represent Celtic and can handle the pressure of playing with Celtic can go anywhere and perform. They used to say about strikers, Brian McClare's the Henrik Larsons, yeah. they couldn't do it in England, they all went down and done it. You know what I mean? So it tells you, and that's why I mentioned about the pressures they got up here. He's went down there and galvanised the club, you know, and the supporters, which is not easy. You yeah. know, it's not easy in a short period of time. And you know you're going to go through difficult periods, mm -hmm. but he still deserves it and he still deserves the res recognition. And he said it there, because it's Celtic, and because if it's our Rangers, you don't get it. Ah, it's only two clubs in that league. Now, you've got about 10 clubs in England getting all the money. But look at all the clubs that's gone down. Look at there's about 18 teams in the, the Championship that were all in the Premier League because financially they can't compete. So it happens everywhere. Now it's becoming a six team league in that division because of the finances. And you're talking about Scotland being two. And we're what, two million pounds to 120 million pounds for being bought in the league. And that to Celtic and Rangers now and we'll see the difference. And that's why you've got to give them fantastic credit because forget the players you've got. It's how he's galvanised the players and changed the way and the mentality of them very, very quickly. But it was a great credit to Celtic and I thought it was a joy when he talked to press men and he's, they're finding that out down there. Yeah. He answers mm -hmm. the questions correctly, honestly, openly. And I think people buy into that, Paul, and he thoroughly deserves the success he gets. Robbie Williams is singing about him as well, <laughs> along with the Tottenham fans, who can be fickle because they've had no success for so long. Are you proud, Craig, of your fellow countrymen? Yeah, well, you look in terms of when he first come to, to the UK, to Scotland in particular, he, he was an unknown to many, uh, certainly not to myself. You uh, played uh, under uh, him. Yeah, yeah. And, and you look at, obviously, the impact uh, not a, you know, that he made at Celtic, the success, uh, success that he had at Celtic. Uh, and also in terms of the, the very early signs and the job that he's doing at, at Tottenham, obviously brand of football exciting. Um, the fans are loving what they're seeing. But, he, he look, he's a, he's a humble guy. And, and the way that he presents himself, I think that people have really, like, taken to because, you know, he's, he's honest and he answers things as best as he can and, and, and tends to see things uh, as a normal person. I think that's how he comes across. Um, so, yeah, no, fair play, you know, more awards. And, look, this is this has not been overnight success for Ange Postacoglu. This is something that he's worked extremely hard his whole life. So, congratulations. Uh, well done. Uh, I think that Spurs will have a great season. And I think he'll have them in the top six, which I think would be huge success for massive, Spurs. Massive. And as you say, getting them to buy into it and the supporters. Listen, talking about at a stage now that I think the fans would accept them getting beaten in the games because they're trying to win every game, no matter who they play. And that's exactly what he done with Celtic. That's exactly what he done in Europe with Celtic last year. That's why I enjoyed it, even though the results weren't as good, because he tries to win every game, whether he's home or away. And that's what supporters pay their money for. They want to be excited with your team. And he brings that excitement, demanding that from his players, but also demanding it from himself and the way he speaks to the press. He's got the meeting out of his hand. The exact same as he did up here because he answers questions openly and honestly. And he done a fantastic one today. I don't know if he's heard it yet. It was on mental health about a Carlson. Uh, he was talking it. about that as well today. So he went in a big spills on that and saying people have all got problems. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. Yeah. Everybody, you're hiding a million things behind your eyes. And it's, we all feel that. You know, it? And you've got to remember these kids are human beings no matter how much money they've got in their pocket. And you've got to understand that. And, but they've got to accept it as well. Everybody in life's got that. And sometimes he says most of the, the richest people in the world have got the biggest problems, mm -hmm. you know? For sure. And that's a fact, because yep. you can't buy your health, <laughs> that's for sure. Did you find that when you were at the top, both of you, you had so many people around you, they wanted to know about it. I know it's another scale these days, but, you know, you both were earning good money, yeah. more than the, the normal working man and woman. And I know he's talking today about Richarlison, who's been talking about his, mm -hmm. he had the wrong people around him and he's going to be better now. Mm -hmm. um, Craig, did be... you find that, that people then... Ah, well, especially here in... in, in Glasgow, like people 
think they have easy access to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so as much as things are going well, they can, uh, they can be, you can be knocked sideways pretty quickly here as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that could be something personal in terms of your own situation, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, and a lot of people don't see all those kind of things that happen because what, what, what fans see here is they see a player that crosses a white line mm-hmm. and then has to give absolutely everything. Um, but again, I, I'm a big believer um, that, you know, be true to yourself, yeah. being humble, and, and it's kind of stood me okay. Have I had the odd argument, Peter? Possibly, mm-hmm. after a couple of points, but very, very rare. No, well, I always respected everybody. I must admit, I, I've never really... If somebody's criticised me, I've just got to accept it, take it on the chin, and I, I walk away. Yep. That was the way I was brought up, walked away. I used to say, as you finished, if you're not finished, right, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. Mm. You know, people used to say, oh, they were always this to me. Like, well, you've never seen me in the front page, pal, so you're telling lies yeah, here. Sure. You know, and I used to just walk away from it, Paul, because, listen, the most respect for Lorraine, her Saturday evening, if we're going out for a drink and somebody's going to mouth at you, whatever, yeah. Listen, let's go out here. Because I felt more for her because you wanted to relax. Sure. And that wasn't nice. And by the end of the night, some of them, you'd eaten out the palm of your hand in the respect because mm-hmm. you'd ask them a question. They'd turn and say, oh, I didn't expect you to be the same. And we're not the same on the pitch. Of course. But we're yep. human beings. Yeah. You know, and that's why I feel for boys. And they suffer, we suffer. And it was different the other day. We suffered. I told you many times, sitting with my suit on after the game, suffering right through the night. We all suffer. Yeah. But we, we never had the help you have nowadays. We just thought that was part of it. Mm-hmm. You know? And it was difficult, but. You try to deal with that yourself and then you had to try and perform it again. You had to try and go out the next day to train the best. Sure. You, that was your way mm. out of it. It wasn't anything else. You live in the public eye. Obviously, the Harry Maguire situation yeah. came to the fore and Brendan Rogers spoke about it yesterday. I, I know Harry well, having worked with him, and I find it a real shame. He's a good guy. But he's obviously a top-class player. The, the, the focus and, and the noise and that that's been around him, sadly, probably has been created more by his own club supporters. And that's spilled out into... To other supporters, you know, I was at the game the other night. This is a guy if you remember, and I think it was the last World Cup. He was in the team of the World Cup, so he's not that bad a player. And I know having working with him, you know, if you if you needed someone by your side when it's tough, you'd want him beside you. He's a great man. He's uh, he's very honest to the game. I know why Garth picks him. He's he's been fantastic for for England, real soldier and a real leader, and amongst the the young players that's coming through there. I find it a real shame that. You know, a player who is a, a very good player and who at the time when he went into Manchester United probably was needing leading himself, being a new player, but he found himself very quickly to be the Manchester United captain. But I can't speak highly enough of him. You know, he's, uh, he's a fantastic man. I see the, the noise and that goes around him, which is a real shame. It's just sad that where it was created from. But he's tough, he's mentally strong and, uh, and he'll prove throughout the rest of his career that he's... He's a very, very good player. And like I say, you don't go from being in a team of the World Cup and being a, and so being recognised as a top international player to people making fun of you. And that's something that, of course, you have to deal with as a, as a player and sometimes a manager as well. But you, you'll get through it. He spoke well there, Peter, didn't he? Fantastic. Well, it's true, you know, it's really difficult when you go through tough mm. times yeah. and it can go on for a long time and people just fall into that mantra and just criticise and you become, especially nowadays... There's no hiding place for it. Sometimes it used to be the Saturday, the Sunday, and maybe the Monday. And then it was quietened down because there was no social media. And then it was out for you, up for you to prepare yourself and perform in the next game. Unfortunately for Harry, people have just jumped on it. But listen, that's what I'm saying when you're playing with the big clubs. Unfortunately, there's no hiding place. And he doesn't deserve it. Brendan's talked about being in the World Cup team of the, the tournament. But also, he done, I think he done it in the Euros as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so... Great credit to him, and listen, you hope he comes through the other side. The only thing I'd like to have seen for him, for him, because it seems as if he does need a change, you know? He needs game uh, time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He, needs to, he, needs, he needs to go out and play now, because the manager's made his decision there because he's putting full-backs in the anti-centre-half before him. Yeah. And once he's and I can understand why Ten Hag's done that, because he probably likes a balanced left foot mm-hmm. on that side, so that's fine. But it's disrespectful too, when you've got somebody that's yeah. the captain of the football club, he's a centre-half, he's predominantly played on the left-hand side, and it makes it difficult, but... Hope he bounces back from it. Hope he gets a move, becomes the player, and all of a sudden we look back and say, wow, what a strong character he was. He could have gone to West Ham. Mm. Back here as we head into the weekend and all the games tomorrow, um, I should say, I got it wrong there. It was £150, John, that you've won. I thought it was. Yeah, I was just checking. Because I'm badder. Because I'm badder. Absolutely. Uh, yes. 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 So Rob wouldn't wouldn't have got that that long. No, he wouldn't. Rob wouldn't have got that long. No. Um, (laughs) So, let's hear from Michael Beale. So, you know, he's under... 
the the pump at the moment. Is that what you would say? Under the pump. You know, he is. He's getting a lot of pressure from it. But um, Rangers fans, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? We'll hear from both of you your predictions shortly. He said today he's confident he can turn things round. I'm hugely confident that we come into this season. Our domestic uh, win percentage was really high. We come into this season, we've played nine games in the first, what, month of the season. Some of the players arrived the week before the season arrived, or like in Sifuentes and Danilo. You have to manage all of that. Nine new players coming in, so important players going out. Last season, I probably relied on Tillman, Sakala, Morelos and Kent in 90% of the games as my front three or front four, so... Those players have changed. I think we've brought really good players in. I think the time to judge them is not right now. I think naturally we'd all want the new players to come in, hit the ground, really run in. The reality is the team's taken a bit longer than I thought to settle. I thought the last game that we played, there was no reason to lose the game. I think um, I think there's a decision in the game that, that sends the game in a certain direction and it, it's regrettable we lost the game. We could have performed better. I'll own it. The players have got to own it as well and now we need to show our worth in the coming months. Greg, is that going to wash with the uh, Rangers fans? <laughs> I keep coming back to winning is the only yeah, thing that's sure. going to wash yep. with the Rangers fans. And, and he, he, yep. he, this next block of matches, seven games in 22 days. Um, yeah. Big task, uh, big pressure. Um, and they need for, like I said, they need for me to have a very, very good run. Um, otherwise, uh, there could be trouble around the corner, unfortunately. I keep going back to that. And I, listen, I understand that, but that's happened in how many games? Up and down the country, not just Celtic Rangers games. It happened to us when I played and ended up losing trophies and going trophies for six years with certain decisions that happened. It happens. The one thing you've got to make sure is, You've just got to say, listen, on the day we didn't do well enough. It was a big decision, yeah, I'll understand that. Sure. But on the day they didn't do enough. Celtic were good in that period. I thought Rangers in that period scored against the run of play through a mistake for the young lad. Mm-hmm. Goose, um, yeah, like a bell. Like a bell. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? I mean, Craig, and, uh, you know, and I, yeah, I thought sure. Celtic had started well. So all these things, and you've got to be very, very careful. And what was how many minutes was gone in that particular game? And I know it gives you a wee bit of a lift. I understand that 100%. Yeah. But I remember going 1-0 one up, one nil up mm-hmm. against Rangers and getting beat 5-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. listen, there's a hell of a long time to go and you've got all your support behind you. I'd course, be just disappointed the way we played. And I would have to just rub myself and say, mm. didn't do enough on the game, didn't play well enough on the game. And I think there'd been acceptance. And I know I used the word delusional all the other week there. I think that then there'd been acceptance. You can't keep going over a bit of somebody because that happened. No, there was a hell of a long time left in the game to change the dynamic of the game and it didn't happen. I think it touches a little bit as well, Paul, on on stats and yeah. best defensive record and most shots on That's target. And, yeah. Oh, no, most shots, but I don't know whether that was shots on target and all sorts of stuff. But again, the the normal person does, doesn't care about that. I know. Now, let's look at the top of the table. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's, That's been the chat over the last couple of weeks. Here are the stats. Over the four league games, we've had 21 more shots than anybody else. We've had the most passes in the final third with the most accuracy. So the, the opportunity has been there for us to have scored more goals. We're underscoring what is expected in terms of the chance creation. And if that changes, then things look a little bit more rosy. There's still work to be done behind the scenes with the team. There always will be, no matter where we get to with that. But... At this moment in time, we're the team that has the least shots on our goal and we have the best defensive record in the league as well. So there's some things that we can move forward from in terms of some foundation. But certainly if we're having that amount of more shots than everybody else and, and get into good areas of the pitch, at some point we'll need to take those chances. Peter, I'm interested in your point here as well, or your point of view here. So see outside of Rangers and Celtic, see in terms of percentages, increasing possession, all these kind of things. They might be uh, key indicators for, for success at other football clubs. For Rangers and Celtic, it's only about winning games of football. So that, for a lot of fans, it is... Um, it, Yawn. It, yeah, it's, not, it's no interest to them. Well, could you explain this to me then? I watch the sky and all that now, mm. and you see all the stats, possession... XG. And this XG. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Hold on a minute. <laughs> What does it mean? Mm. Uh, I'd be be making sure I was keeping that quiet anyway if I was Michael for one reason, because all strikers are brought in. And if I'd have that amount of shots from no scoring goals and no winning games or whatever, I'd be disappointed. But this XG and that now, and that's what I'm saying we're getting carried away with. Mm. You know, Manchester United's most successful team, and I watched this closely because 
the very good sides with the Beckhams and all that and the Roy Keane's not scores four passes Manchester United would score off Pep's changed everything with the fantastic yeah. teams they had at Barcelona and Manchester City Manchester City and Manchester United under Sir Alex Ferguson was a pass for the back into the midfield midfield tinty skulls skulls wide to Beckham or whatever and a cross in the box Ruud van Nistelrooy front post Boom. goal hold on a minute is that expected goals? no how many times we hit the target hit the bloody net it's not about hitting the target you know but expected goals and all this this XG drives me insane and it doesn't matter Davy Moyes used to say if they have the most possession in the game I can guarantee I've lost it yeah because he always used to think that the opposition were making them pass back or square sure and that's a fact so let's not kid ourselves we all love to see the, the beautiful game played the right way but we're all looking to score as a midfield player the first look you've got to have is forward yeah. as a defender yeah. if you're on the ball pass into the midfield midfield into front men shots and target he's on one the Australian assistant national coach is coming on next the Go Radio football show with Global Eco Energy personal face to face advice on renewable energy products let's go Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Thanks for making the switch. So many of you enjoying the show from 5pm. Well, tonight, Craig Moore in great form. Peter Grant, he's being mischievous tonight. <laughs> uh, and Peter, a great coach, has just come into the studio. He had 25 years in England uh, at Norwich, West Ham and all the rest. Craig, it's not something you fancied, coaching? No? No, definitely Over not. Over the years? Um, 24-7, uh, doesn't stop. And I don't think the opportunity of celebrating any game... Yeah. Um, is there because they're thinking about the next yeah. one well delighted to welcome fellow countrymen of yours yep. Ufi Tally joins us one of the, the assistant coach for Australia Ufi welcome can I call you Ufi yes yeah. sir, definitely you can Thank welcome you very much. to the Gorbals here in Glasgow had you heard of the Gorbals in Glasgow before today <laughs> <laughs> I can no, tell by that text message from me no, yeah, yeah. but you found it so you were here obviously for the game the other night watching England coming to town against Scotland what did you make of it yeah look uh, it was a fantastic atmosphere uh, I think uh, England played a really good game. Uh, it got exciting uh, when Scotland uh, got the goal, and I thought you know the intensity was going to rise again. But unfortunately, when uh, England scored the third, I think it uh, definitely killed the game. You've got them next month, thirteenth, isn't it? You'll October. be playing them yes. of October. Yes. Yeah, that that is next month, Craig. We're, 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 we're going to show Scotland how to do it, Ulfie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we we Australians have always battled very hard, and uh, that's one of our biggest traits that we have. Uh, we'll always have a go, and I think uh, if you watched our game against uh, Mexico, uh, we were definitely in their faces, and I think uh, it'll be quite similar against England as well. Yeah, there's some team though, aren't they? When you look at it, I mean, three players who are, what, what, they've paid over a hundred million for it is frightening. Not least the bench, Jude Bellingham. Watching him the other night, what do you make of him? Uh, he's a quality player. Yeah. Uh, he's still young. Uh, he's playing at, at a very high level. Uh, just that turn and that ball into Harry Kane. You know, he's got the, there's a lot of quality over that park. And Declan Rice as well. I mean, we could go through the whole England team, but we're a Scottish radio station and we don't <laughs> yeah. want to say too much. <laughs> we, can, we, we can talk about Australians a little bit because there's quite a number of Australian players, Paul. Are there? Uh, yeah, in, in, indeed. In the, in the, uh, the personalities. The, the, Scot the Scottish Premier League, Uffie. So you've been taking an interest in Scotland? Yes, definitely taking an interest in Scotland. I'm uh, going to watch the boys uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon and, and see them in their own environment, which will be nice. Uh, and not watching watching games over Y Scouts uh, <laughs> yeah, at, sure. at most times, so it's going to be yeah, uh, nice yeah. to see the boys in their own environment and see how they go. Who are you watching specifically then tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're going out to to With watch Hearts, Hearts, uh, yeah. Hearts uh, Aberdeen, Hearts and Aberdeen game. I think three, be four a, Aussie boys there. I, I think it's uh, a very important game for both teams as well. So uh, I think mm. uh, it's going to be nice to see uh, Nate, Cammy, and, and Kai, you know, in their own element. Yeah. Of course. What do you think, yeah. Ufie, when you're looking at the Scottish game? It's easy for us to try and boost it with Australian boys coming out here. You could look at them coming here and playing the games here. You're not looking at saying, oh, they're not playing at a great standard or whatever. Have you been quite impressed the way they've come back with the national team any time any of them has been called up to play at the standard of their abilities have not dropped because of the league they're in? No, I think the league is, is, is great. I think the, the quality is, is very good here. And then at the same time, you look at the boys when they do come back to the national team, they've, they've obviously the intensity has changed in their game and the way that they apply themselves because they need to be 100% professional as well. And... Uh, you know, it helps us as a national team that our players are playing in, in good competitions and I think uh, it definitely helps the boys playing here. Great. Uh, Ufi, obviously it's been very tough for me to see the success of Ange <laughs> at Celtic with me being at, being at Rangers. But uh, again, the, the, the impact that um, he's made um, at Celtic in Australia uh, and also as a coach yourself, the ambition uh, with yourself, looking at Ange, your aspirations in the future. 
Yeah, look, definitely uh, want to head to Europe as well. Like Ange, Ange's done a fantastic job. Uh, I think he's paved the way for us uh, Aussie coaches as well and what he's achieved uh, so far uh, in his career. And look, we I've had the opportunity to work alongside him when he was working with the national team and I know the way that Ange works. And look, for us, I think uh, our Aussie players are doing well uh, overseas in Europe and also hopefully our coaches doing well, even Kev uh, doing well in Japan. Yep. Uh, you know, we've, we've got some coaches coming through and we've, I think we've got some really talented coaches coming through and, and uh, hopefully these boys uh, continue. Monty's come over as well. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. say he's Australian. We'll take him as an Australian. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he will bring uh, success to Hibs as well. And uh, like I said, I think we've got, we've got a lot of talent out there. And I think just the opportunity needs to be provided. And is the sort of hot ticket at the moment. You know, in Tottenham, as you know, massive club. Haven't won anything for such a long time. Um, I, I think I know your answer will be you're not surprised. Are you um, surprised at how quickly they've taken to him at Tottenham? Yeah, well, uh, Angie's a, a good man manager at the same time. Uh, I think uh, he's good at creating the environment for the players. Uh, and I think he, he leaves that change room for the players to, to drive their own expectation. Uh, and I think he does that quite well. And obviously, tactically, he's, he's very smart in the way that he wants to play. And You'll always uh, play an open game where he wants to have a go, uh, typical Australian way. Uh, if we're going to lose, we'll lose our way, uh, rather than sitting back and, and holding back and waiting for things to happen. So, you know, he's, he's done that at Celtic and he's continued to do that now at Tottenham. He's well, always so good with the press, because I think that's he's important. Better. You know, I think that's so important, especially in the modern day. You've got to do so many interviews, constant, you know, whether you're European football, whether you're league football. Mm. So you're never off the television. And it can be boring for a manager... I mean, I'm hearing, like, like, say, Hansi Flick, when you're watching this programme on the Germans now, he had to travel two, hour, two and a half hours on match day and the day before a match in the World Cup for Germany, which you'd think would be very unusual. Yeah. And the first question they asked him, why have you not got a player with you? He said, well, I've got a five-hour journey there and back before a game tomorrow mm. and all this sort of thing. And the pressures that go on these managers at the top, they've got to be ready for every single question. And nobody understands the amount of work they're doing anyway, but the press is massive for them. And one wrong word... Can crucify him. And I think Ange has been brilliant yeah. uh, in Scotland, and he's continued doing it in England. Is that something as you see as a progression of Armenia's coaching? Yeah, I think it progresses uh, as you go along, and the more that you deal with the media and, and the answers that you you have uh, for the media as well, because sometimes you, you you do get a silly question, and you need to deal with that question as well. And, and I think uh, Ange has progressed quite well uh, in that side of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's very clear in his messaging. Uh, I think he's clear in his messaging to the to the media. Is is pretty clear that he's setting down the same path with the players as well. So it doesn't change. It doesn't chop and change uh, with Ange, and I think he does it very, very, very well. Wolfie, going to dig a little bit deeper back to your playing days. You spent a bit of time at Galatasaray. It's been a long time, it's been a long time those playing <laughs> yeah, days, yes. But, but you yeah. did play under someone that people do know very well here in, in Graham Souness, and that that one particular match, what happened in the match? At, uh, was it the cup final against Fenerbahce? That was the cup final, the second leg. Uh, the first game we, we drew at home, uh, nil nil. Uh, and then we had the, the second leg. We went 1 nil down uh, in the game, and the fans were going off, obviously playing away at home uh, at Fenerbahce's uh, stadium. Uh, and then I think Dean Saunders scored a, a fantastic goal, which uh, we equalised. I think it was late in the game, like 87th minute. And we ended up winning the cup on the away goal rules uh, back then. Uh, and I think Graham uh, was quite excited at that time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, he grabbed the, the flag and he, and he ran to the, the centre of the pitch and he actually tried to put the flag in, but I don't know if you remember the old days when the lines used to be made of chalk. Yeah. And, yeah. and after a while, that, that becomes sort of a bit of a hill on the park and he couldn't actually get it into the, into the chalk. So he ended up, you know, putting the side into the dirt. So, you know, it's, it's a big part of the history of Galatasaray. There's, there's flags of him uh, actually putting that flag down and two yeah. shirts made of him. So, you know, he's, he made an impact. He made a, he made a definite impact. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've always thought, I wonder if he'd ever tried that in Glasgow. Oh, <laughs> he wasn't brave enough. Well, that's well, what it was. I was gonna, he certainly is brave. He's 70 oh, no. years old and he swam the English Channel just a Recently. couple of months ago yeah, for charity. Yeah. 70 years old. And he tackled it. No, I, I tackled it. Yeah, no, he did. And no, he did. He raised, he raised over a million pounds. I saw him the other night on the sideline doing um, some TV work, and he still looks very good. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, he does. Yeah, no, he's, he, he's a good man. So, Ulfi, so, the game against yeah. the game against England in terms of the Australia, mm -hmm. Australian friendly. Mm -hmm. How how do you see that going? How excited are you for that match? Yeah, very excited. It's a very rare chance you get to play a game in Wembley. Uh, so we're excited for, for that. Uh, we'll do our prep. Uh, I'm sure we've got a meeting coming up uh, this week with the staff and, and go through 
where players are at in club space. We've got a few, a couple of injuries uh, from the last game. So, uh, you know, we'll go through the squad. And the, and the main thing is that we hope that our boys are playing where they are uh, because you don't have a lot of time to, to work with them when they come into camp. So a couple of days and, and ready for a game. So the prep will be done. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a great game, uh, game plan against mm-hmm. England. And look, we'll go out there and uh, we won't look back. That's definitely we will have a go. So in the last squad there, how many players were in the squad that have come from Scotland? There was a few, eh? Yeah, there was a few. We had, uh, we, had we had a couple of boys from Samira and we had the boys from uh, Hearts. From Hearts yeah. uh, that are there. You know, we've got a few uh, Australian players. So, so uh, there was players. five or six. There was yeah, five or six from the... Right. Uh, and somebody you did have, Mark's been on the socials at Go Football Show saying, what about Aaron Moy and what a player he was? And it's just a pity that he's not able uh, to play on. Yeah, look, Aaron's a fantastic player. He's had a he's had a great career. Uh, he's one of our uh, probably one of our best midfielders that have come through. Technically, uh, very good. Uh, not the quickest player, but very quick uh, in his mind in what he can what he can do on the park. So he'll be uh, uh, sorely missed, definitely. Uh, the decision that he's made to to retire. But look, uh, another fantastic player that's uh, played for Australia. Any any news on Tommy Rogic? No, no news. No, no news, because no I've not heard anything in terms of club-wise or anything like that. It's just been very, very quiet. Because he won so much over here, as you know. Yeah, yeah. but he's similar. Yeah. He puts in mind the, the way Mark Viduka was when he signed for Celtic. Remember Mark oh, yeah. signed for Celtic? Marco. And then he ended yeah. up not playing for the first three months the, the club, but they sent him back to Australia because he mm. never settled in. And Thomas has put me in very much like that because mm. his talent is undoubted, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And the amount of games, it was fantastic. He'd won in his own for Celtic, really. Um, just to disappear, goes to West Brom, which I thought was a strange one, to be fair. Is that under Steve Bruce? I can't Steve Bruce, Bruce, I think it was, but yeah, but yeah you're right. You know, but I remember him playing, funny enough, against England. Yeah. Um, and I said to Celt- uh, Fulham, I was at Fulham at the time, mm-hmm. and I said to Fulham, go and watch him. His contract was up with Celtic, mm-hmm. and he was the best player on the pitch, and this was a top quality England side against Australia. I think it was played at Sunderland's pitch, okay. the Stadium yeah. of yeah. And he yeah. was the best player on the pitch. And Glenn Hoddle, of all players, oh. a top midfield player, said, I thought Rogic was outstanding. I got back to Fulham all, all happy and said, oh, did you yeah. see Rogic last night? And he said, oh, we got a scout report back. Wasn't he very good? <laughs> I was like, you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. How good That's he was. Football, we we have yeah. very, very talented players. Uh, you know, the, the, the hardest part for the Australian boys is we've only got 12 teams uh, currently in the, in the A-League in Australia. Uh, sometimes it's... Uh, Limited opportunities for players, but some slip through the cracks and end up coming into Europe a little bit earlier. But look, we've got uh, definitely some some very talented players, uh, and we have produced some talented players. And one on my left here that uh, had a good career as well with Maury. And well, he just tried hard. I was going to ask you, <laughs> yeah, give us some of the insights. I mean, we know him so well from here. Obviously, his time at Rangers, Crystal Palace, Newcastle. What about with the Australian national team? Yeah, look, uh, Maury's, Maury's won the armband for the, for the national team. Yeah. Uh, Maury's actually uh, my age as well. Uh, he was good enough to play in the 20s World Cup, the one mm-hmm. earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was younger, so he could have played two cycles mm-hmm. at that time. But uh, FIFA changed the rules. But, uh, so he should have been in my cycle of the 20s uh, when we played for Australia for the World Cup in Qatar mm-hmm. in 95, that was. Uh, you, had, you had the one at home. So, look, you know, we back then I think there was – you know, we, for Australians, if we want to play football, you have to leave the country because yeah, that was good for us. So to be to be a professional, you had to leave, Paul. Whereas now, because the A League, yeah, it's a bit of a safety net. Uh-huh. Players come and they don't stick it out. Well, you look at likes of Kehill yeah. and impact yeah. he had yeah. in English football. I was doing England yeah, at that particular yeah. time. He was outstanding, and we tried to sign him at West Ham, but mm-hmm. we had the playoff still to play. And he ended up going to Everton instead, but he was very, very much interested. Instead of going to Everton, he was wanting to come to West Ham. But we still had to wait two weeks because it was a playoff final we were playing. And we, we got up, obviously. And uh, Tim was one of their players. You know, you just thought that was the start of the Australians coming through, having big impacts. You know, and as I said, because they had great character. You always felt it character. You're talking about Craig and that. And that was one thing I thought about them. You know, they were all fantastic professionals and great leaders. And I think they, they, they opened their arms when they came over here. They tried to do mm-hmm. everything properly. And I think that was so, so important. And I think that shined through the Australian background. Can yeah. you stay on for another 10 minutes or so uh, with sure, us? Sure, yeah. Sure, um, we're going to take a quick break because uh, Andy's on and he wants to ask you about Marco Tilio. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Personal face to face advice on renewable energy products. Let's go! An Australian invasion, and it's a very welcome one here tonight in the Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Greg Moore here, as you have been twice this week, so, yeah. Yeah, and no, I've been, been busy, and, and certainly Uffie um, has kept me busy as chaperone. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Shining the sights of Glasgow. We've obviously... 
give him a treat with weather wise. Sorry, today. the weather's just changed. <laughs> yeah, if he tallied the <laughs> national coach, assistant coach to Australia, the, the weather, not surprised, is it though? You didn't come to Glasgow for the weather, did you? No, no, I come to see some football and I definitely saw it on Tuesday night and then hopefully see some more over the weekend. Andy has been on the socials asking about Marco Tilio. We've not seen him yet at Celtic. He's back in training. In fact, Brendan Rodgers spoke about him yesterday. What kind of player are the Celtic fans going to see? Look, uh, we, we had Marco at Sydney uh, when he was in yep. the youth team, mm -hmm. uh, when I was at Sydney FC. Uh, he's always played as, as a winger. Uh, he's, he's very, he's deceivingly quick for a small mm -hmm. guy. Uh, he likes to take players on 1v1. Uh, and uh, he's actually very good going forward. And in the last couple of years, I think he's really uh, added to his game as the defending side of the game. Uh, he was one of those boys that liked to play with the ball and the defensive side wasn't so important, but <laughs> something uh, very important at Melbourne City that he, that he def definitely did learn was the defending mm -hmm. side of the game. So, look, he's an exciting player. He's a young player. Uh, and I think uh, if he gets the opportunity, uh, he will turn some heads. Peter, Celtic needs somebody after Jota has gone to the Middle East. And the inju injury yeah. to Abara. Uh, yeah, of course. It's interesting yeah. that Ufi yeah. says, but he, he can, the 1v1s, I think they're always important now, you know, because, you know, it's Celtic and Rangers. There are always teams defending against them big time. You've seen it at St John's Celtic had won five or six, even though they didn't play particularly well. But in any wee moments when you get the guys that can take people on 1v1, I think they're so, so important still, even in the modern day game, people talk about because you've got to have chance creators, because you've got a magnificent goal scorer. But you need somebody that can fire that, you know, fire the bullets or set the gun up or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And if you've got guys that can take people on, and Brendan loves his wingers. You know, he does it slightly different for Ange because Ange like the guys to come inside or keep them wide and bring the full-backs in. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see how Brendan manipulates his wingers now because he's got Yang, he's got Mieda out there. So it'll be interesting to see how the young man comes in. And listen, that's a big challenge for him. You come to a club like Celtic and you're playing with big players. You want to get into the national team, you've got to show your performances. But it's good to see that he's one of these kids that can take people on. Young Abad have been there as well. And he's only 20, 21 years yeah, of age as well. Yeah, so you're, you're getting that young guys as well who could improve and playing in that environment can only help the national team. And I'm sure that's yeah. what we're that's looking at. Definitely, we want our boys to be playing. We want mm. them to be playing at, at high levels, uh, which uh, definitely impacts the national team. So, you know, when they come in and they're used to that intensity and they come in and they raise the intensity with the national team as well. And I'm, look, I'm sure when uh, Marco gets his opportunity that uh, he will do well. And I, I just hope, I just hope, because he, he has had an injury, uh, yeah. which is not the ideal start, um, but it's good to hear that, he, that he's back and all that sort of stuff. You know, remember Celtic with Arzani, you know, yeah, a yeah. great, great talent, but he, he he done his ACL very, very early. Yeah. So, look, I just hope that with Tilio, who is slightly different, but he does have that low centre of gravity, so he has that ability to, to, to go both ways and explode and get away from people. So when he's fit, look, the hard test is, I mean, you know, I come from Australia. You, you don't know what you're coming into when you come to Rangers or Celtic. So... How he adapts to that um, is going to be key. But the most important thing, if he can get fit, Peter, um, he gives himself a fair crack of the whip to go and do a job. It's always the same. You know, people say you've got to come in and hit the ground running. You don't get time. You know, you just need minutes on that pitch to show your, your value. And the way you do that is get yourself in the best condition you possibly can. That's the only way you can do it. And on the training pitch, every day, be your best. And you're going to have your bad days, of course, but try and be the best and do the things that you're good at and put that in the manager's mind every second, every time you're on that training pitch. Peter, what are you thinking about Jota? So he's not even in the squad this weekend for Al Etihad, so... Yeah, I don't think he's allowed now, Paul, nope. because he brought the Spanish sure. centre-back yeah. in. So... so is he off to Turkey? Yeah, I'm really disappointed for the kid because he's a top quality player and a top. And he seemed... I thought he was built for the likes of Celtic yeah. in the respect he had a great rapport with the supporters, mm. you know... He put me in mind of De Canio, and I'd, not as a no. player, not as a player, but the personality. Yeah. You know, you've seen him out in the roundabout Glasgow and whatever. Turned so, up at the pub. Absolutely. All these yeah. wee things, but when he celebrated, it was for everybody there, and the fans really bought that. And that's what I've I seen a sim similar connection with, like I said, De Canio when I played. But, as I say, I'm gutted for him because I, I could, he couldn't knock back the money. Celtic couldn't knock back the money. Sure. I understand the reasons why he's went, but I'm gutted that a young kid like that is not getting an opportunity to play football. Right, we're going to hear some more from Michael Beale because we're back to domestic stuff this weekend and there's been so much attention on Rangers. Are they going to bounce back after the disappointment against Celtic and going out of the Champions League? Michael Beale was asked today, what about the reaction of his uh, players to the criticism of the fans? Going in, the, the fans are really frustrated and disappointed. If they think the players ain't, then that would be foolish of them because the players also, they live and breathe it every day and there's been... 
some really honest words been said in-house that remain between us as a group. But as I said, the, the talking needs to be done on the football pitch now. It's about winning. He said it himself. The guys have said it tonight. And he said then we can win back the Rangers fans and he's confident he can do it. Well, listen, I think the fans have shown a frustration towards myself. That's fair, but they've shown a frustration towards the players as well. So none of us are really in a lot of credit at the moment. The way you get that as a football manager and a football team is winning games of football. We've got seven in 22 days. So on we go. And one more from him about his squad and the strongest squad. Who's he got? No, no, the strongest team will play the next game. I think uh, there's been some things that uh, have not been ideal at the start of the season for one or two players, but in terms of not being available or not being in a, in a fantastic place. But Tom Lawrence is now fully fit. He comes in the squad. Kamar Roos played the last two or three. He would have two in two if the officials would have done their job correctly in the last game. Um, so he's in a really good place at the moment. Unfortunately, Todd Cantwell will miss probably the next three or four games um, as a result of the challenge at the end of the game. Kieran Dow's the same, um, but other than that, everyone else is fit and, and ready to go. Uh, so, yeah, on we go with these next few games. Craig, what are you thinking? The hangover's obviously still there. He's mentioning about the the, the goal that he felt yeah. should have been his. Got to dust yourself down and, and move on pretty quickly. Mm. Um, but the international break, as I keep going back to, is not ideal because they had longer to think about yeah. the last four or five days that Michael's touched on a, a number of times. He just needs to get back to winning ways. I think a lot of people are interested to know what his best 11 is. Mm. He, he's touched on it there, so it'd be interesting to see what that best 11 is. Well, uh, it's, a, it's interesting listening to him talking about the two and two. If George Cadet's goal would have stood at Ibrox, maybe <laughs> I'd had a league championship. So that's life. Mm. You know, you go on with it, dust yourself down. Nobody's interested. You're talking about seven games in 21 days. I'm asking you, is a Rangers man? How many is he allowed to lose? I don't think he's allowed to lose one. No. Nah. Celtic and Rangers are not allowed to lose mm. any. That is the way it is. Even Real Betis, Peter. At that's, home. The way, that's the way football is, Paul. You know, but it's at home the first game? Is it, yeah. it, it, but, but also the fact what I'm saying is. No, it's away. I, but what I'm saying is, Craig. It's home or away. But good, good program, that. Home away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you live down under? Oh. Run away, run down. <laughs> but, so, but, the fun, yeah. but what I'm saying is, if you don't win games of football with this, these clubs, you're under pressure yeah. the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's as simple as that. It doesn't go away. Whether it's real betters away, real betters at home, it does not matter. The criticism comes with because that's the expectation. Mm. You know, to, to win games of football, and unfortunately, it's been two weeks for them. That's a nightmare for you. You're going into that break and you've lost that Celtic Rangers game. That is a nightmare. It couldn't have been any worse for them in that respect. And that is the difficulty. But when you're playing for Celtic or Rangers on this run of games, you're expected to win everyone. Yeah, you are expected to win the home games. Of course, I get it. So... They have to win every game. Where's it starting tomorrow? What do you think you're going to be there along with Uffi? Yeah, what well, do you think you're going to see? Look, again, I, I think you're going to see a, a, a Rangers team that certainly the, the, the effort um, is going to be there. That desire, it, it doesn't need to be beautiful. They just need to find a way tomorrow to try and go and win a, a game of football. St. Johnston will make it difficult, I think, on the back of two draws. Um, so they'll make life difficult for uh, Rangers, no doubt about that. Um, you know, Rangers really need to. St they need to start the game well. Like I said, strip it back, basics. Do the basics well. Try and get your 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 heads in front, and then look to build on that. But it's going to be a tough match. But it could be a big weekend for Danilo. Danilo, well, again, he's in your, you, you he's spend, in your team. Yeah, Uffi, you spend five or six million on a player. Are you playing him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's one of the big things for the Rangers fans they're saying well nearly 6 million why are you not playing them Peter what do you think is going to happen if you'll be there watching it along with I Craig? think Rangers will win 3-0 yeah. Oh, yeah. convincing yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that Rangers will be convincing tomorrow but they have to play in a certain way that they should have done they put Celtic's backline under pressure mm -hmm. at Ibrox when the crowd were going crazy and they build up to the game and as the game started they didn't do it it doesn't matter how many passes you get in it doesn't matter, your, is it XG you call it? <laughs> it yeah, doesn't it matter. X's. doesn't yeah. matter. You've got to have shots at goal. Like I said at the last time, you've got to have the ball in the ball. You've got to play with a purpose. You've got to keep taking the ball off the opposition. You know, make them face their own goal. Make them make mistakes. And play with that pride and passion. And listen, Michael's 100% right. The players will be hurting. But don't tell everybody we're sorry again. Just go out and prove it with the performances. 
And that's what happens in football. When you lose a game, you've got to dust yourself down and show you've got a bit about you and go and win that next game. It's going to be some week coming up and, of course, Champions League for Celtic on Tuesday. Brendan Rodgers speaking about the challenge. Yeah, well, looking forward to it. It's obviously an elite competition with the best teams in Europe. So um, so that's it's a great challenge, both from a player perspective and a, and a coaching perspective. So it's always exciting. Our aim is to make sure we're as competitive as we possibly can be. This game's all about levels, and, and we're going up a few notches in terms of levels. You're going, you know, you're competing against the best teams in Europe, so that's that's a challenge in itself. You know, things are that bit quicker, that bit faster. Players technically very strong, mentally strong, and like I say, it's uh, it's, it's a real real test for you. But that's what we want. But tomorrow, Peter, it's Dundee coming to town. What's going to happen? I think Celtic will win comfortably, Paul. I think that'll be four now. You know, I just think that these two teams have to put in big performances. Celtic, because they've come on the back of a disappointing last home game, you know, had a great result at Ibrox. But the only way that's a great result at Ibrox if you come back and perform mm -hmm. at Celtic. And that's the that's what I keep saying about the expectation. That's a constant. It never changes. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go out tomorrow and play and win. Craig? Too much for Dundee. I mean, they've, they've adapted early on quite well, but Celtic yeah. at home will be far too strong. Far too strong. Celtic connection as well. Gary Hooper, you... Yes, I've had uh, yeah. Gary at Wellington Phoenix uh, with us. Uh, fantastic person, uh, fantastic character. Mm -hmm. uh, great to have in the change room with the boys. Uh, an abundance of uh, experience uh, for our young lads at Wellington as well. And and he can score a goal. Uh, that's definite uh, with hoops. And it took us a while to get him on the park. Uh, he came injured to us, but uh, once he once we got him going, he was fantastic. He didn't mind mixing it either, eh? Yeah. He didn't mind no, mixing no, it. No, he didn't mind. There was times where I brought him on and, and our <laughs> young striker would get him bullied. And I'd yeah. say, hoops, make sure you fix him up when you go out there. And, and you hoops, sure you've not got a bad score? <laughs> and, uh, and hoops definitely uh, didn't mind backing into the sense of defenders. So. He did well last weekend in the Masters. Masters. Uh, Barry had an injury, so he was the manager. Right, we'll whip through the other ones. Hearts, Aber Dean, they both. I went really for a draw in that one. You went for the draw. Yeah. Okay. Craig, I asked you last night on that one. You were also. What did you think? I, I think. I think wins, I, you know. I think I might have won a draw as well. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. Uh, Killy against uh, Hibbs. I of went course. for a Hibbs and a Montgomery. Uh, Montgomery. Is he going to do well? Go for Monty. He's going to do well, definitely. Monty's going to do. He's doing the kilt walk on Sunday Is along he? with David Marshall Does and start? the team. Really? Uh, they'll be there at eleven Lovely. for. They'll be there at eleven on Sunday for the the wee one. They've got three hundred Hibbs. Um, community fans who'll be there doing it really? it's a brilliant thing 7,000 walkers Peter I've went for Kelly to win that yeah. one ok and Motherwell against St Mirren Peter I went for a draw in that one mm. a draw and Ross County Livy Craig I actually I, I think I went for Ross County to win that one tough game Livingston are hard they're hard to play against and well organised but I think Ross County at home will definitely get a result 2-1 I'm going for that's good exactly what I wrote. Yeah. Really good to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming me. in. And good luck uh, with Australia Thank against England much. next month. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy the games tomorrow. You're off to St. Mirren. Uh, sorry, St. Johnson against Rangers. And then, and then Hearts Aberdeen. Aberdeen. He works you hard, Double doesn't bubble. he? Yeah. I don't know whether I'm working him hard or he's working me hard, but it's been good. No, it's been good. Uh, Maury's looked after me quite well. Since <laughs> He'll be here, asking so. for the petal. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Barry Ferguson's back on Monday night along with Mark Guidi. Have a great weekend. Zoe Kelly's up next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. 10% off your solar install in September. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go. Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products including solar PV, battery storage and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023.